Hi guys, welcome to this video. In this video, we analyze an AON article. I am Krishant, I am the founder of Word Pandit and I will be explaining this article to you. Now, this is one lengthy, long, complicated article. We can see it runs over three pages. So, you will have to be extremely patient for this video because the content here is absolutely brilliant and it's something that you're going to enjoy. Uh, there are a lot of inferences that need to be drawn from this case. This is an article which does not depend upon vocabulary, but rather depends upon reasoning and logic. And hence, we'll take it slowly and we'll, I'll try to explain it as much as I can. Let's get started with it. What's the title of the article? The article is, why do you believe what you do? Run some diagnostics on it. So one thing that gets immediately clarified is, this is going to be about our beliefs and why do we believe the things that we do? Let's get started with the article. Many of the beliefs that play a fundamental role in our worldview are largely the result of communities in which we've been immersed. So that means that the views, the beliefs that we've developed, right, those are because of our communities where we've been brought up. Religious parents tend to beget religious children. What does beget mean? The word beget means to father, right? To father something. So, for example, to father here would mean to bring into existence. So, that's one of the meanings, right? To beget a child, that means you father a child. What the meaning, the implication of that is to cause something to happen or to bring about something. That is the contextual meaning that it implies. So religious parents tend to beget uh, religious children. Liberal education institutes tend to uh, produce liberal graduates. Blue states, this refers to the democratic states in uh, United States of America. They stay mostly blue. So these states maintain their belief system and red ones stay mostly red. So he's basically implying here these states, right? These states have certain individuals, these states have certain communities and these communities, they pass on their political viewpoints down the generations. And hence the state, it holds on to its beliefs, right? So it's the belief of a community. Of course, some people through their own sheer intelligence might be able to see through fallacious false reasoning, detect biases and as a result resist the social influences that lead most of us to believe, right? So some people would be outliers, they would be able to detect these biases and they would be able to correct their reasoning, right? False reasoning. But the author here says, I am not that special. So learning how susceptible my beliefs are to these sort of influences makes me a bit squirmy, right? It makes you wriggle, makes you uncomfortable. You're squirming in your seats and you're wriggling, right? Now here when he says, I'm not that special, right? This is a rhetorical device. We will see that the author actually comes up with a system how to interpret your beliefs. So the author is sensible enough to do that, but he's just trying to remain humble here, right? So just saying this for uh, literally impact. So now he's going to give us a very good example of what kind of beliefs is he talking about. Let's take up a hypothetical example. Suppose I'm raised among atheists. Atheists are people who do not believe in God and firmly believe that God doesn't exist. I realized that had I grown up in a religious community, I would almost certainly have believed in God. So he's implying here is his belief in atheism is because of the community that he was born in, right? That is the implication, that is the inference that we draw from this context is because he was brought up, brought up in a certain community, hence he's an atheist. Furthermore, we can imagine that had I grown up a theist, so that would be an opposite of an atheist, someone who believes in God, I would have been exposed to all the considerations that I take relevant to the question of whether God exists. I would have learned science, history, I would have heard all the same arguments for and against the existence of God. Now, the thing which is very important here is what he's saying is whether you grow up in an atheist uh, community or a theist community, the arguments that you learn, right, and the subjects that you study, so for example, your schooling, science and history, all those remain the same, right, and you have the same arguments for the existence of God and against the existence of God. But your worldview, right, which has developed is because of your social environment. Your social environment has, for example, chosen to believe in God and hence you believe in God. So that's a very, very important point here. The belief in God is not formed on the basis of your reasoning, but the fact is you've chosen to adopt some of those reasons, right, because you've been brought up in a certain community. The difference is I would interpret this evidence differently. So your interpretation of evidence, your interpretation of arguments, it depends upon the communities you've been brought up in. 
Divergences in belief result from the fact that people weigh the evidence for and against theism in different ways. So why do we have divergences in belief? Why do people contradict each other or why do different communities have different beliefs? They view the same arguments differently. It's not as if pooling resources and having a conversation in would result in one side convincing the other. So it's not as if you sit across a table, supposing theists and atheists sit across the table, discuss all their arguments and then you have a final answer. That wouldn't happen. Because if that had happened, he says, we wouldn't have had the centuries of religious conflict if things were so simple. If people were able to convince each other, right, there would be no conflict because the argument then would win, right? One side of the argument would be able to prove itself. That has not happened, obviously, right? Rather, each side will insist that the balance of considerations, it supports its position. And this insistence will be a product of social environments that people on that side were raised in. So each side, so for example, if you are a theist, you will stick to your arguments. And if you are an atheist, you would stick to your arguments. So both sides are, will stick to their arguments. And hence the divergence of viewpoints and hence the conflict. The you just believe that, uh, this is an interesting paragraph here, eh? the you just believe that because, so you believe a certain thing challenge, right? So this is a challenge where you ask yourself, imagine you ask yourself this question, why do you believe that? You just believe that because any belief that you have with respect to religion, politics, any social belief that you have, you ask yourself, why do you believe that? is meant to make us suspicious of our beliefs, to motivate, to motivate us to reduce our confidence or even abandon them completely. So this challenge is meant to question us, right? Just imagine this scenario where you are asking yourself, why do you believe in particular things? Because when you do that, right, when you will add this because, this question, all of a sudden, the firmness of your belief, right, the reasoning that, supposed reasoning that you carried in your mind, you believed in something, all of a sudden that would be exposed and you would realize, do I really have accurate reasoning, accurate arguments for this belief? But what exactly does this challenge amount to? The fact that I have my particular beliefs as a result of growing up in a certain community is just a boring psychological fact about me and is not in it itself evidence for or against anything so grand as the existence of God. Now this is very important, right? So for example, I have been brought up in an atheist community, right? And I believe that God does not exist, right? Uh, realizing that my beliefs are because of my community, right? I have just realized this, that my beliefs are because of my community. Does this prove or does this disprove God? It does not, right? The argument for the existence of God or not for the existence of God is independent of my psychological reasons of my beliefs, right? So you might wonder if these psychological facts about me are not themselves evidence of for or against our worldview, why would learning them motivate any of us to reduce our confidence in such matters? So he says that my belief does not matter, right? I have raised this question against my belief and I have realized that uh, even if my belief is driven by my community, this does not diminish the claim for or against God. That claim still remains, right? Whether he exists or he does not exist, that's independent of me. If that is independent of me, why am I asking myself these questions? Why does it reduce my confidence in my beliefs when I probe these questions, right? Let's go through the answer for this now. The method of believing whatever one's social surroundings tell one to believe is not reliable. So the author says, if your social surroundings are telling you to believe in a particular thing, right? So that's not a reliable method of believing in things, right? Because remember, then that's not a belief that you've arrived at because of reasoning. That's because you've been told so, right? In a way, the reason becomes, why does a certain, why do you believe in a certain thing? Because I was told it is so. So when I learn about the social influences on my belief, I learn that I have formed my beliefs using an unreliable method. If it turns out that, so now he takes up another example where he's going to take up a physical example of a thermometer. And this is where this article gets really tricky and interesting. So he now is going to give parallel examples and he's going to then find flaws in his own example. If it turns out that my thermometer produces its reading using an unreliable mechanism, I cease to trust the thermometer. So he is now giving a parallel example. He says, imagine a thermometer which is not reliable. 
if it is not giving it and it is giving unreliable readings i will not believe in it right similarly if i realize that the method of my beliefs is not reliable right then i will not believe in them also but in the hypothetical example do i really hold my beliefs are formed by an unreliable method i might think as follows right so now he says in the case of my beliefs am i really convinced that the method remember a thermometer is a physical device you can see that its reading is faulty but how do you do so with your beliefs he says i might think i formed my atheistic beliefs as a result of growing up in a particular community not as a result of growing up in some other community or another the fact that there are a bunch of communities out there that inculcate their member with false beliefs doesn't mean that my community does he says if there are some communities which have false beliefs that is not sufficient evidence to doubt my community so i deny the exist i deny that my beliefs are formed by an unreliable method luckily for me they were formed by an extremely reliable method they are the result of growing up among intelligent well informed people with a sensible world view so here what you basically done is you've given a justification you have justified why are my beliefs correct right so here you are refusing to compare it with a physical thermometer right you are saying my beliefs right how can i say that the my, the system of arriving at my beliefs is unreliable there were the people who arrived at these beliefs they were super intelligent they had a sensible world view if other communities are not like this how can you say that my community is not reliable right so this is a justification right remember this justification has again it has not uh, given me conclusive proof that god does not exist right this is a way of justifying my community right the thermometer analogy then is inept learning that i would have believed differently if i had been raised by a different community right so he's saying the thermometer analogy is inept it is not accurate in this case i can't apply it it's not apt right learning that i would have believed differently if i had been raised by a different community is not like learning that my thermometer is unreliable right so he's saying this is not equivalent to my thermometer being unreliable it's more like learning that my thermometer came from a store that sells a large number of unreliable thermometers so imagine so here it's not about the thermometer it's not about the reading it's not about the belief itself remember what has he done in the previous paragraph here he has taken it to the level of the community he said my community is sensible if my community is sensible so that is it so he's saying now let's forget about the thermometer the community is now like a store right my store sells a lot of unreliable thermometers there are a lot of communities out there with unreliable beliefs but the fact that the store sells unreliable thermometers doesn't mean that i shouldn't trust the readings of my thermometer right so if the store has faulty thermometers if there are communities out there with faulty thermometers i might be lucky right after all i might have excellent reasons to think that i got lucky and bought one of those few reliable ones so for example for here what he's doing is he's counting luck as an argument right that luckily my particular community is the sensible one right luckily i picked a community which was sensible you begin to see you are beginning to justify your own community here right you are giving justifications how your community is valid so there is something fishy about the i got lucky response right so author says when you give this argument right where you are justifying first you said my community is sensible the others are not so people go on to say that that's not enough then you go on to say luckily i was because then if your community is sensible right you are basically saying i was lucky to be born in this community i was lucky to be in a community which had the right view points right so he says that's something fishy about the i got lucky response because i would think the very same thing if i were raised in a community that i take to believe falsehoods so the problem with this is this argument of being lucky right someone who lives in a community which has false beliefs he would also say the same thing right luckily i he is not going to see the falsity of his beliefs remember he is saying my community is valid so he would see his community as valid if i am an atheist i might think luckily i was raised by people who are well educated take science seriously and aren't in the grip of old fashioned religious dogma but if i were a theist i would think something along the lines of 
if i had been raised by arrogant people who believe that there is nothing nothing greater than themselves so the same people who are well educated take science seriously the other side sees them as arrogant and sees them as self obsessed narcissistic people i might have never personally experienced god's grace and would have ended up completely distorted view of reality so now this is a counter view point which has been given right the same luck argument that luckily my community believes in the right things you can both sides can justify it the fact that i got lucky response is a response anyone could give seems to undermine its legitimacy so you can't say that my remember when you say something like this right in the last three paragraphs what basically the author has highlighted is these are attempts to justify your community these are attempts to say that my community believes in the right thing first you say that my community is well educated etc etc all those arguments whatever arguments x y z you give then you give the argument that i was lucky to be in such an community he says the lucky argument can be given by any community even one with false beliefs right so you will again it's about whether those beliefs are valid or not there is no objective criteria here of the beliefs being checked rather what is being done is you are using these methods to justify your own community and by extension if you are say your community is valid hence you go on to justify that the way you arrived at those beliefs that is also valid despite the apparent fishiness of the i got lucky response in the case of religious belief this response is perfectly sensible in other cases right so he says this in the case of religious belief we can see we can't really use the i got lucky response he says if we return to thermometer suppose that when i was looking for a thermometer i knew very little about the different types and picked a random one off the shelf after learning the store sells many unreliable thermometers i got worried did some research found that the one that i had bought is produced by reputable companies which are extraordinarily reliable there is nothing wrong thinking how lucky i am to have ended up with this excellent thermometer in this case in the case of a thermometer you can say that right in this case you can do that he says what's the difference why can't i do this with religious belief why can i do it with thermometers what's the difference why does it seem perfectly reasonable to think i got lucky about the thermometer i bought but not to think i got lucky with the community i was raised in here's the answer my belief that the community i was raised in is in is a reliable one itself plausibly a result of growing up in that community if i don't think take for granted the beliefs that my community instilled in me then i'll find that i have no particular reason to think that my community is more reliable than others if we were evaluating the reliability of some belief forming method we can't use beliefs that are the result of the very method in support of that method's reliability so a lot of circular reasoning here so what has happened is i'll explain this in simple terms uh so now your response is that i got lucky and with the thermometer example it seems to work then why not in the case of your community why do you believe that uh, your community is reliable what is the reason for this belief that your community is reliable this is circular reasoning in itself you say it's reliable because you were born and brought up in that community right and you find no particular reason to think that my community is more reliable than others right so in this case you have if i don't take for granted so in this case what you've done is you've said i believe in my community uh what is the reason for believing in your community right the very fact that you were born in this community and since i was born in this community this is a reliable community hence my beliefs are reliable so you are justifying the reliability of your community by being raised in that community itself that means there is no external objective criteria to check the validity of those beliefs you are not using reasoning to counter the beliefs you are just justifying the fact that you arrived at those beliefs because you were born in that community you were raised in that community and your belief in the validity of that community right i believe in the beliefs of my community because i grew up in this community right so that's not a valid form of reasoning a community cannot justify itself there have to be objective benchmarks that it has to measure against in the case of the thermometer right it's actually a physical thing you can go and check whether the thermometer is valid or not there are objective benchmarks you can check it against here there are no objective independent benchmarks which are being used right you are using your own 
you points to justify your own beliefs right so you're moving in your own circle so if we thought to abandon our socially influenced beliefs it is for the following reasons if we ought to abandon our socially influenced beliefs so he says if you want to abandon these beliefs it has to be for the following reason deliberation about whether to maintain or abandon a belief or a set of beliefs due to the worries about how the beliefs were formed must be conducted from a perspective that doesn't rely on those beliefs in question so you need an independent reference frame right so you cannot depend upon the same beliefs to justify them you have to move outside that circle right there has to be an independent framework if these beliefs are formed because of certain reasons have an independent perspective to analyze these here's another way of putting the point when we are concerned that some belief we have and we are we are wondering whether to give it up we are engaged in doubt so now i have doubt whether i should keep this belief or not when we doubt we set aside some belief or cluster of beliefs and we wonder whether the beliefs in question can be recovered from a perspective that doesn't rely on those beliefs so you had a certain belief, set of beliefs you set these aside in this box and you label this as doubts right now you are trying to arrive at these beliefs right without any other previous belief system that you had the belief system of your community can't depend upon it right can you derive these beliefs in a way which is independent of your community and the beliefs that you were brought up in sometimes we learn that these can be recovered once they've been subject to doubt and other times we learn they can't so there is always going to be this uh, uh, dichotomy that we are going to be stuck in this division where some of the beliefs can be recovered some cannot be recovered without depending upon your original belief system what's worrisome about the realization of our moral religious and political beliefs are heavily socially influenced is that many ways of recovering belief from doubt are not available to us in this case so what happens in moral religious and political beliefs remember in the case of a thermometer that's a physical device right that's that's scientific inquiry in the case of moral religious and political beliefs we do not have methods of recovering belief from doubt once we have a doubt we really don't have that objective framework right where we can analyze it keeping in keeping away all our previous beliefs right all the beliefs that we kind of we almost taken in lineage from our community we can't make use of ordinary arguments in support of these beliefs because in perspective of doubt the legitimacy of those very arguments is being questioned right so the arguments the belief system of the community that we were depending upon we are questioning those right we are saying so for example if i say i believe in god right and this belief in god is because of my community and the things that i have practiced in my community i cannot use those things to justify my belief right those that the argument is against those very things right after all we are imagining that we find the arguments for our view more compelling than the arguments for alternate views as the result of the very social influence we are concerned with so our basic problem is my belief in god right that is because of my social influences right and that is the problem so you can't use the social influences to dispel the doubt that i now have with respect to my belief in god can't do that in the perspective of doubt we also cannot take the fact that we believe what we do as evidence for the belief's truth right you cannot right you cannot say that since i believe in this hence it's true can't say that right that's again not evidence that's not reasoning because we know what we believe we do simply because we were raised in a certain environment and the fact that we were raised here rather than there is no good reason to think that our beliefs are the correct ones you cannot give the justification of your community you cannot say since i was born here this is an argument remember that we use a lot right so for example when people compare countries they say i was born in india and hence i have a better value system can't do that right cannot use your community to justify your beliefs there right that's what the author is saying it's important to realize the concern about beliefs being socially influenced is very some only if we are deliberating whether to maintain belief from the perspective of doubt so we will only worry about this once we are in doubt right once we begin to doubt ourselves that's only when this worry comes in remember otherwise we'll actually not be even aware that our beliefs are because of our social system right we ignore that fact for recall that facts that the facts that about how my particular beliefs were 
were caused are not in themselves evidence for or against any particular religion, moral or political outlook, right? Remember that how your beliefs were caused, right? So for example, how did I arrive at the fact that I am an atheist or theist, right? Because of the thoughts of my community, that in itself does not justify belief against God or belief for God, right? Again, same thing with political, whether you believe in left-wing politics or right-wing politics. For example, you were you were in an environment which believed in left-wing politics, right? And hence you begin to believe in those ideas. That in itself, right, does not prove left-wing ideas work, right? That's just that you believe in it. So if you are thinking about whether to abandon your beliefs from a perspective in which you are willing to make use of all the reasoning and arguments you normally use, you would simply think you got lucky, just as you might have got lucky for a particular thermometer. So if you use this particular line of reasoning, right, and if you continue to use your existing thought frameworks, if you continue to use the one frameworks that you've developed because of living in a certain community, you will continue to believe in your arguments. You'll continue to think, I got lucky. Luckily, I was in this community and I have these beliefs, right? Or reaching the train moments before it shuts its door or striking up a conversation on an aeroplane with someone who ends up being the love of your life. So these are all things that you would believe in just because you are using the arguments that you are normally using. There is no general problem that with thinking that we have been lucky. Sometimes we are, right? The worry is just that from the perspective of doubt, we don't have the resources to justify the claim we have been lucky, right? What's needed to support such a belief is part of what's being questioned. The problem is if you are lucky at times you have arrived at the correct viewpoint. The author is saying that's absolutely fine. But the moment you begin to doubt, right? that whether should I really believe in this. So for example, should I really believe in left-wing politics, right? The moment you have this doubt, the, he says at times we just don't have the resources, right? Remember, our arguments, all the arguments that we have are because of our belief system, right? This belief system is BS. BS stands for another thing. So we are not going to count for that, right? So now, it's not BS, right? He's saying your arguments are because of your belief system. The problem is when we doubt, right? Uh, it's not about the fact that whether left-wing politics is right or wrong. So I'm just taking up the second example here. It's not about whether this politics is right or wrong. The problem is the very belief system, the doubt that we've created here with the validity of the argument for left-wing politics that is driven by the belief system. This belief system was formed because of the community that we live in. And hence, when we will be evaluating this doubt, we would again be depending upon this piece of information. Can you rule this out and truly look at left-wing politics in an independent way? In a way which does not depend upon your previous knowledge. That is what the challenge is. That is what the real test is. If you are able to do that right, then you've arrived at uh, the place where you need to arrive at, your arguments would be logical in nature. So this finishes this wonderful article. This is almost a 30 minute video, but this uh, article deserved this kind of input and uh, this kind of explanation. Hopefully at the end of this video, this article is completely clear to you now and you've understood the nuances of it. This is Prashant signing off. Hopefully so, you had a great time watching this video. Uh, do keep watching these article analysis videos and improve your understanding of language as well as the reasoning contained in these complicated articles. Thank you very much for watching this video and as always, happy learning.